Hello, listeners. This is Kat. Welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Watch Your Heroes Fall. This will be Part 17, Chapter 19, entitled Phase 2, Scene 10, Stage Fright. I still think you're bullshitting us, Shigaraki grumbles. There's no way this set's going to be unlocked just like that. You clearly don't know Izuku, Shoto says. Momo nods, feeling a grin on her face despite the nauseous anxiety burning through her gut. He's a horrible liar. Itoshi chuckles a little. If he tries, he goes all red in the face and stutters a lot like this. I do not, Izuku shouts. Shh, Compress hisses. Magne rolls her eyes. Stealth was your idea, Izuku. If I had my way, we... Jean's voice stammers over a tick. We would just run in, guns blazing. Which is why we were caught every time in the past, Kurigiri murmurs. Hitoshi points at Kurigiri with a winning smile. I like sneaking, Himiko whispers loudly. It's fun. I get to use my whole body, but slower. This is besides the point, Dobby says. Why are we sneaking up on Uebame, an unlocked commercial set, instead of, you know, stringing her up with her own boom mic? Dark, Hitoshi quips. Hasn't he literally killed people? Shoto asks. From Momo's vantage point, she can see how Dobby's jaw clenches at that, and she frowns, too. He hasn't, but everyone else here has. Hey, mine is only attempted murder, Himiko Whisper yells. He made it to the hospital just fine. He did, Jean says. When you first joined, you said he was dead. Hey, yeah, you did say that, Comper says. And Shigaraki adds, you were proud of it. But Himiko shrugs, pressing her back to a wall on Izuku's command with the rest of them. And when the coast is clear, once again, she responds. I wanted to impress you guys. Izuku checks his notes, checks the flat expanse of late-night asphalt between them and to Uebame's commercial set, and asks, Wait, what about all those murders you're accused of? The ones involving bloodletting? How do you know what murders she's been accused of? Momo asks. Shota raises an eyebrow at her like he's surprised that she's surprised and she throws her hands up in an exasperated gesture. Shigaraki says, You literally fought Stain, and you're asking her about that shit. He did what? Momo and Itoshi shout, and Magne and Dabi both shush them. How do you know about that? Shoto asks. Shigaraki answers, That Nomu that grabbed Izuku is for surveillance. The Nomu that did what? Momo and Itoshi whisper shout, and are shushed again. And Stain was responsible for the bloodletting murders, Izuku asks, completely ignoring the security guard passing across the blacktop until Shoto and Compress drag him back against the wall. After the security guard passes, Shigaraki responds, Duh. They were all vigilantes. Sensei was looking into recruiting half of them. Izuku makes a surprised face, but whether he's surprised Shigaraki knows this or surprised Shigaraki would offer up information in Himiko's defense is uncertain. Shigaraki continues a little uncomfortable. I try to keep an eye on all the new vigilantes. They're usually easy recruits for the League. And you've heard about Lamplight and the Grudge? Hitoshi asks. He stalks vigilante blogs like crazy and wants to gush about it with Shigaraki once they're all back at the bar. Shigaraki shrugs. Yeah, and whisper. Hitoshi doesn't recognize this one, and neither does anyone else in the League, and they all lean in for Shigaraki to tell them more, but he doesn't. Just checks his dollar store watch and nudges Izuku's shoulder to press them back on the move. Izuku nods back at Shigaraki, checks around both corners, and beckons the league to follow him, up to the back entrance of Seiya Studios, filming Center C. The door is, as Izuku had told them, unlocked, and the set is largely dark once they go inside. Uabami is sitting in a chair, scrolling through her phone, under the only set light currently on. Everyone else will be arriving in approximately an hour. Izuku nods to Momo and Magne, who split off in the group to get the cameras rolling. Izuku holds the rest of the group back in the shadows, waiting. After a few minutes, Uabami curses. The light from her phone screen has died. Her purse is sitting on the floor below her chair, and inside it is a charger, most likely. But for the moment, her phone is dead. Izuku straightens up, gives a small hand motion for everyone to follow his lead, and steps out from the shadows. Uabami, so nice to see you this evening, Izuku sings. I love your perfume commercial, Toga says, bouncing on her toes. The red one, in the heart-shaped bottle. What was it called? Decadence, Compress answers. Dobby continues looking her up and down. 
That's a good word for you, isn't it? Not everyone in the league would know this about her, but Dobby would. She's wearing a tailored Hermes pantsuit and red-bottomed blue baton heels. It's hard to tell how much a skincare routine costs based on the face, but Uabami skin is flawless even though the makeup artist has yet to arrive, and the airbrushing won't happen until post-production, when Uabami is back at home on her couch scrolling through the internet. The ensemble alone easily costs as much as some people pay in half a year's rent and the hourly pay of the staff that will arrive in 40 minutes to prep her hair and makeup and select a new outfit for her to wear will easily cost just as much. And she didn't make that money doing hero work. She made it advertising perfume and cosmetics and, earlier in her career, hamburgers and department stores. Nothing wrong with the little decadence, Kurigiri says. Shigaraki pushes towards the front of the group, hissing his voice between grit teeth. Except when you're exploiting fifteen year old girls to sell it. Uabami remains impressively stalwart, despite the tremor visible in her hand. Did you rehearse that bit? she asks, her eyes leveling across their ranks with a sardonic grin. She sets her phone down in her lap like it's not dead. It's so cute, finishing each other's sentences. You little hero students are like real villains. Momo melts out of the shadows and Uabami stiffens. Hello, Uabami. A pleasure to see you again. Momo's role is unscripted. Izuku's given her free reign in what to say. Magne is at her back for support, a comforting hand resting on her shoulder to keep it square. I'm here to ask for an apology. From his spot at the front of the league, Izuku grins wide. Uebami takes the smile as a threat and shrinks minutely into her chair. I didn't do anything wrong, she says solidly. Nobody in the league responds. They wait. She shifts in her chair, sits up a little straighter. I didn't break any laws. You can check. Everything I did followed the law to the letter. My lawyer checked. The League remains silent. Watching her, she starts to squirm. She looks back and forth between Momo's nervous, square-shouldered resolution and Izuku's manic grin, both backed by the intimidating, expressionless presence of the League of Villains. She stammers. It... It was an internship. They signed up for it. They wanted to be there, you know. She grins a little shaky grin. Come on, Yayorozu, tell them. You were there. You were one of them. They'll listen to you. You wanted to be there, didn't you? You wanted it. And several members of the League almost snap there. Toga is pulling out one of the knives Izuku asked her not to bring, and Shota's left side is heating up, and Magne's teeth are gritting, and Shigaraki is scratching at his neck, and Izuku holds them back with a look, but the ice is thin, and Izuku blinks at Momo, and Momo says, deathly cold. No, Uwabami. I didn't want to be half-naked on public television. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Uabami cries, voice trying to thread the needle of emotion that will save her ass. You were fine. You weren't half-naked. You were you were just showing a bit of sex appeal. It's part of the business. She laughs a little, and her posture grows more uneven when nobody laughs with her. Remember what I taught you, Yayurozu? Part of the business. Nobody supports a female hero unless she shows some skin. You said you understood that. I was just trying to get your name out there. You understand, don't you? That's why your hero costume is so revealing. You understand. You have to show some skin, you know. This is a boy's game, really. You have to show some skin or you'll end up in the gutter like Miss Joke. Emmy never took my advice and her costume has no sex appeal and that's why she's still teaching at a high school instead of advancing to the top ten. Don't you get it? The younger you start, the greater advantage you have. Men like high school girls. And the sooner you accept that, the sooner you'll be able to make it big as a hero, Yayurozu. Dobby tries to push past Izuku, arms lit up, blue, despite the stitches that are sizzling and popping. But Izuku and Shoto both stop him. Uabami doesn't see it. She just says, I won't apologize for being right. Dobby manages to calm down without burning things in the shadows, but he gives Momo a little light-hearted, comforting look that Momo can interpret after the few weeks together to mean that he'd kill Uabami if Momo asked him to. And she giggles. Uabami startles at the sound, frayed nerves missing the eye of the needle that could keep this conversation in her control. She skitters backward in her chair, and her smile skews. Well, I mean, I knew you didn't want to, you know, um, expose yourself like that. I just... It was for your own good, Yayurozu. Please understand. Don't you want to be marketable? You want to be perceived well, don't you? Your friends here understand the importance of image, right? You would make the same choices in my position. Momo steps half a step forward, just outside of Magne's protective arm's reach, shoulders still square. It was never about being a hero for you, was it? She asks. Uabami flinches. I'm a hero, she cries. What I did for those girls was unrelated. 
everyone in the league stills. Uabami's smile is unflinching and proud now, maybe smug. They asked for a job. I gave them a job. They never asked me what the job was going to be doing. It was my fault they got caught doing it. The men were happy to pay, and those girls were happy to get paid. It was a win-win. I didn't do anything wrong. Just to be clear, Izuka's voice breaks into the echo. What job did you give them? You know what job, Jean hisses, and Izuka whirls to glare at him because now Uabame is sitting up straight, smiling prim and pretty again, smoothing her hair. My stylist will be here any minute, Uabame says, needle-sharp grin. Izuka's expression smooths out, too, and he stitches his facade back into place, and he says, But you've already been on the air, Uabame. And her face drops, and Izuka laughs. I hope your PR team can handle allegations of organizing prostitution. Uabame tries to make her grin, just as perfectly embroidered, but there are stray threads of her hair flying out, and her eyes are glinting like the edge of a blade. I hope you have half as good of a lawyer. We don't need one, Shigaraki says, and him and Izuku both laugh, and then Kurigiri's inky black cloud swallows them all, and they're gone. Ninety-three seconds before Uabame's manager sprints through the door of the studio to scream at her to turn the cameras off. Jean, Dobby, you two need to hold it the fuck together, Izuku says the moment the portal is closed behind them. You need to chill, Magne snips back, shoving Izuku into a booth. Your ribs are still a jigsaw puzzle. We could have gotten her to admit to organizing a prostitution ring, Izuku cries, on live television. I could poke you in the chest and you would collapse. Hitoshi says. Please don't kill my boyfriend, Shoto says, slumping into the booth opposite to Izuku. Please stop being all lovey-dovey, Dobby says. Toga laughs. Why? They're in love. That's what people in love do. You guys are 15, Dobby mutters. You're not in love. You're hormonal and stupid. Compress laughs. Ah, yes, your lofty 23 years has freed you from such foolishness. The human brain isn't fully developed until 25 or 28 years old, Kurigiri offers, mostly just to watch Dobby fume a little and have everyone else laugh. I'm serious, Izuku cries in the middle of it all, and the laughter quiets. You could have cost us a lot more than that confession if I hadn't held you back. Did you not hear what that bitch said? Shigaraki hisses. I wanted to kill her, and I don't even like Momo or other human beings. You've killed people. Hitoshi says, not really accusatory, just clarifying. But I never forced little girls to do anything like that, Shigaraki snaps. I had a sister. I mean, like, ugh. Shigaraki scratches viciously at his neck. Can you imagine? Some kid Himiko's age? No. See, I'll kill that bitch and never lose sleep. But that shit is disgusting. That's not villain shit. That's... that's wrong. Jean nods, looking his age, almost old enough to be the hero students' parents for a minute, as his attention sweeps over Momo, Himiko, Hitoshi, Shoto, and Izuku. With a calm stillness, even through his ticks, he says, And for the fucking record, yea, no, men don't like teenage girls. We know, Jean, Himiko says, and Jean says, No, Himiko, look at me. Please, just listen. Men don't like teenage girls. Anyone telling you otherwise is a predator. Do not ever. Jean pauses to let a tick run its course through his left arm. Ever. Let someone convince you that that is okay. All right, Jean, Momo says. We understand. It's the first thing she said since they got back to the bar, and it calms Jean down a little. He huffs and nods and sinks into a bar stool. He's right, though, Magne says. Pedophiles like teenage girls. Don't call him nothing but that. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 19 of Watch Your Heroes Fall. Chapter 20 will be up next. Let me know your thoughts and reactions to everything so far. And as always, thank you so much for listening.